The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. This is the Thursday edition, um, August the 8th, August the 7th, August the 7th. And my pleasure to be here Monday through Friday on market days. Oh, tough when the tide turns. When the tide turns, no matter what you do, you can throw that piece of driftwood out into the ocean. It will not come back to shore. It keeps getting pushed away if the tide is going out. If the tide is coming in, it'll always come back in, no matter how much you want it to go out. And right now, the tide is uh, still in a concerted down mode. The Dow was up very nicely earlier on, up almost 60 points. The S&P was sharply higher. Right now, the Dow is down 35, and the S&P is down 3.73. The S&P uh, uh, whoops, uh, down 373 at 1916. The Comp Index is down uh, just slightly down 43.55. Gold, which had a spectacular day yesterday, up 23 dollars, is now unch at about 13.08. Silver is up uh, now; it's down about six cents at 19.95. You've got platinum up eight at 14.71. High grade copper is up 1.5 at 318. All right, it's hanging around that three area. The moment it starts to close under three, I would say that it's saying economic weakness internationally. Um, going on, the crude oil is down just a little bit at 9690. Most importantly, bonds are up a half a point. Um, with bonds up like this, let me just show you the chart. ESU uh, 40. If you're looking at Tiger TV, you'll always see that the chart on the left, well, in this case, I'm moving away the 120 minute. The chart on the left is the daily chart. The weekly chart is in the middle, and the monthly chart is on the right. Because it's the future contract, I don't have all that much data. I have about a year's worth of data. Um, <clears throat> so let me go to the continuous contract, because I certainly have tons of data there going back decades. This is the first attempt that we can see in the monthly chart to break that downtrend uh, resistance line. If in August bonds are able to climb and test the high of May of 2013, I'll give you the number, but it's smoothed out, so it really isn't the correct number. It's absolutely the correct date, not the correct number. But we're at 138, almost one, let's call it 139 right now. <clears throat> If bonds are able to break above 143, um, this is to say you can get to 144. In other words, whatever you're looking at now, let me just go to this contract here and I'll be able to give you a little bit better scenario. What am I looking at? I'm looking at there. No, I don't have it. Pity. Um, <laughs> so bonds are trading 138. No, it's fine. I, I know exactly what I'm going to do. At US, so we're at 138 and 29, 30 seconds. Oh, we're within one, one, one tick. No problem at all. So if it goes above whatever the smoothed out price is of May of 2013, that high, I've got it written down as 143 and 18, 30 seconds. Uh, no, that's what I've got now. It wasn't that previously because it keeps getting smoothed out. But if bonds are able to, don't, they don't even have to trade, uh, they don't have to close there. They just have to, in August, touch one tick above that high, and that immediately says, not only have you got, if it's an extension of this leg, leg C in the monthly chart, underneath the all-time high back in July of 2012, that's two years ago, at 145 and 1030 seconds, not much higher than that, that high that I was talking about in uh, May of 2013, it says that bonds have become a, um, a currency of safety, and because of that, um, you will see more outflows of money from equities into this kind of fixed area. And that's a fixed, a fixed uh, let's call it the conservative side of, of the, uh, the market spectrum. It's where folks go if they're a little nervous and not sure what to do. Now, this is going to be very interesting. On my continuous contract, there was a parallel high. You remember there was a high on the 
21st of July at 1.38 and 1.38 uh, and 27, 30 seconds. And then 138 and 27, 30 seconds again, instead of making by one tick on the 23rd of July, leg C. I call that a parallel C and I call it a phantom C. And I said, well, if we've got a peak D here on the 29th of July, we should see a sharp pullback. Well, we certainly did get some kind of a pullback and went all the way down to 136 and a half. Now we're trading towards the, alt the, the recovery highs and the, the candle of yesterday with a high of 139 and 830 seconds. That's what we want to see taken out if you are bullish on bonds and bearish on yields. Let's go on. We've got, in fact, the dollar. That's going to be very interesting. Will this technique that I've discussed for a little while unfold? Either we're going to get leg D in the index as it goes one penny above, if it isn't today, it'll be, uh, that'll continue leg C. If it isn't today, it'll be tomorrow. And we'll go to 81.73 or higher for leg D. Or this is a technique that I talk about in the, um, the use of the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, where we're looking at the fast moving average still having a fabulous run. There's no sign yet of weakness. And that very often only takes you to a G, and then it starts to wiggle around, but it just doesn't quite make that leg D. However, if it makes D, you're back to where you were today to say, hey, be a little careful here, because in leg D, you could, in fact, pull back. But in an instant restart, if you make a second buy, buy signal to buy mode, very often you can go to an E or even an F. So... At this particular point, am I bullish or bearish bonds? I can uh, the dollar. All I can say that there's still very strong uh, energy in, inside the dollar. It's leg B in the weekly chart. No sign yet of turning down in the weekly. That has to come from the daily, and the daily is giving me one sign, and that one sign is going to say by Monday at two o'clock. If the dollar has not made a dollar index has not made a new recovery high, but instead in this daily chart that I'm showing you here is under 81.30, we've made some kind of a short-term top, and then you can expect, yep, it's coming. I know a lot of you are waiting for me to talk about it uh, from the questions that I had uh, been asked, and this is going to be very important. GCZ 14. Gold is having a very nice bounce now. I did not want to take any risks at all. We've had some really nice trades. I'm in, in, I'm in a mood right now to keep the uh, losses as tiny, as close to 1% or 2% as possible and try to let gains uh, ride. We took another 20% gain uh, um, yesterday um, in one of our positions. And um, I, I just... All I can say is I do not want to be vulnerable to the upside uh, without very tight constraints. So I, I can say unfortunately, because in a way it is unfortunate, I should have had a little bit more uh, conviction for this. We did buy a gold stock. We got stopped out for a very tiny, I think it's a 1.2% loss, and now it's back above where we bought it at. Um, it was a gold stock. It is a gold stock. It was an output portfolio. That's what I meant to say. Um, and I, you know, in a way, I'm sorry that we, we don't still have it. And on the other hand, I didn't want to have it if it was starting to go down 3 4 or 5%. I just, I don't feel we need that right now. We've had some real nice positions. We've got nice positions. We're in the right trend. Um, our long position that we took this morning as a trade is up very nicely. I, I don't I just don't feel for my subscribers to my opening call that I want uh, to be taking on any extra risks. Um, we want to short. There are a lot of stocks that are getting ready to, to short. Um, the, the, the tide has changed, and that's all I can say about it. EUR, EUR, USD. I thought that, I'm sorry, I meant to finish that, that thought, and the thought was that gold could, in fact, have a, a very nice upside spike if there's more trouble in the Ukraine. I still think that's a possibility, and I, I, my, my plan now is to actually change my modus operandi. If, if it's gold, then don't go for gold stocks. Go for gold. If it is gold stocks, go for gold stocks rather than the gold metal itself uh, in your trading right here. So we're looking at the euro. Euro is about to test its, its leg E. If this is a, a trough E, then by tomorrow you should see the dollar pulling back and the euro going from 1.335 right now that the euro 
dollar currency pair and pushing towards the 1.341 area to get above the nine period exponential moving average. Should happen by Friday afternoon or Monday. Now, the next thing we're looking at here is TYX.X. That is the, uh, the yield. And it's going to be very interesting because uh, how many times am I supposed to notate this without losing the charts? Hey, yeah, yeah. A, B, C. It's made a peak D. It's pulling back. The yield, I must say, the monthly chart, the yield looks like it wants to go lower. The weekly chart says it could have looked quite good if we were up at the uh, top of the range in the yield, the 30-year yield at 33.28. Instead, we're at 32.49. And that's very negative. It says there's a good chance that we will try to test the low of 32.17. But this is also the place where the speed of the up move and the speed of the down move says if this right, if the left side low bar in the euro of the 29th of July at 32.17, if that holds, and there's a push at even getting close to the high of three days ago of 33.27, 30, you just have to get even 33.20. That would be very positive and say, hey, dollar could be pulling back now as the uh, euro rallies and we'll be watching gold as well. Um, so I think we've covered a chunk of stuff right now. Let me put save this. And now let me go to oh, question in the dead. Yeah, I, I've had a number of people ask me about the volatility index, the VIX index. Um, I'm going to put it this way. In the volatility index, the moves that we've had of late over the past, I'm going to say over the past two weeks, it's actually three weeks, but from the 10.28 low of the 5th, was it? The 3rd of July. Um, I think this is excellent action. And we've been trying to uh, keep our core position, a uh, small core position, even though we've taken really nice gains in the, in the way we're trading the volatility index. Uh, we're still trying to keep a, 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 some kind of a position in it because it could, it could, might be a high level consolidation, might not be pulling back very much from here. So this is a very important session. Because it's the session that in price and time, oh, let me just show you this. This is what I show my subscribers every day. This Dow chart with all, all, the, all the, the discussion going on here, um, I had said, look, there it is. Today, we could still do it today. I wasn't expecting that it would do it today. Uh, give me a second. I'm trying to get that. There it is. Do you see that low bar of 16,369 uh, uh, 16, right there? Where did it go? 16,369. Oh, it must be underneath. 16,369. That 369 did not hit the 16,341 left side, right side price time match that I've been measuring for quite some time. And that said that today, the, the 7th of October, uh, 7th of August, is a day that we should either break, test, or start to rally away from the December low of, uh, 20th low of 16,341. I'll talk more about it. If this you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. 
using this first of its kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Investors, Taz Market Research delivers to its subscribers expert commentary on the analysis of 50 different markets each day. Get this invaluable and timely information through the daily market research videos Taz Market Research produces each day before 9 a.m. The video analysis will include reports on currencies, interest rates, indices, metals, energies, grains, and more. You'll be able to gauge where high profitability setups are in each of the markets. Receive a free two-week trial subscription to Taz Market Research videos on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Basil, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, folks. Yes, there are a couple of stocks that are acting very well. I had a couple of questions while we were out. Uh, I'll go to the questions as well in my, in my email uh, as well as the IMs. Um, Tesla, was a, a, this is a very important stock to look at right now because it is select. Uh, there are very select bullish charts, and, and, and Tesla, look at this. This is a daily chart. Look at that beautiful U-shaped pattern in the Japan Wave methodology is a technique that I talk about very often, and that is the cup and ladle breakout pattern. I haven't spoken about it just lately because we've seen very few stocks able to do that right now. They're doing the inverse. They're making the H pattern or the arch formation. But this cup pattern with a breakout from the left side to the right. Let me show you what I do. Yeah, there's a little technique that I use. So yeah, we've got, we got left side, red. Right side, green. <clears throat> and if it takes it out, decisively without preferably without making that cup and ladle pattern um it says that there should be at least a d so i'm not going to call this g right now i have no need to the stochastic said almost 90 percent. that's fantastic and the magd is expanding getting a little bit overboard but not overboard yet and this is a b and that says to me it should go over the next week and a half it should go to at least by next week it should go to a d peak b leg c peak c Leg D, peak D. And the weekly chart is leg C. But this is the most important thing. There's a recycle. <clears throat> and the recycle, it needs to go just one penny above the 265 round number all-time high. That is amazing. 265 round number high. It needs one penny. That means it needs another 12 points from here. That might be hard to do. 
But if it does it in the month, this month, August, it immediately goes to a leg D in the month, and that says, okay, now you're going to start getting cautious. So on the one hand, it's great, and the other hand, it says, oops, be a little careful. But with the weak Ionian leg C, that says there's a good chance that you will get a peak C and then still get a leg D, especially with IPOs. They invariably, at the end of the day, they make leg Ds. Even IPOs. Um, so uh, let's go and continue. So, that, that, so Tesla right now looking great. Very short term. I'm looking at this as A, A, B, C, D. Uh, okay. A, B, C, D. And a recycle. Yeah. So it's within, I would say it's within today's highs, 256.70. It's within maybe two points, two and a half points of making some shorter term top, and then it should pull back. 246 is a, is a nine period moving average in, in the 120 minute chart. Um, I suspect it'll just pull back a little bit, and then it'll try to climb to leg C and then maybe D. So we're gonna be watching Tesla for making some kind of a short term top, not yet, at least not the way I'm looking at it. So um, that's there was one question. Another question is, let me just go through, through them in order. Um, so I'm going to look at this in terms of, uh, here it is, uh, Vix Gartley. Uh, let me just see what's going on there. Just I, I like to do. Oh, I, I wanted to show this chart. Remember yesterday I was looking at the 30-minute, was it yesterday or the day before, the IWM, and I said it's gone to an E slash B in the uh, 120 in the 30 minute chart, it should pull back, try to hold the nine period moving average, and then go a little higher. When it went to an F slash C, now it's pulling back sharply. It says that the IWM on the 30 minute chart has made a top of significance. This is 30 minutes, remember? It's not a daily or a weekly or 120. And that says, <clears throat> be careful that it doesn't try to test the law of 111.40. Oh, wait a minute. 111.40. Uh, sorry, of 110.63 over the next two days if it closes at the lows for the day. But if there's some kind of a balance that's going to a rectangle formation, just say, I'm trying to form a base here to, to try to tackle the 200 period exponential moving average um, and that whole strain of, um, uh, of, of trend lines to the upside and the downside, like, like bands, Bollinger Bands. So what we're looking at here is the IWM on the 30-minute chart. It's not looking that great. On the, on the, um, on the daily, uh, it's failing. It's making a leg E, maybe a peak A, if it, it, it doesn't have a higher high than today of 112.52. It's trading right now at 111.40, down 33 cents. This is just not good action at all. So I wanted to just cover that. And then you remember we did this as well, ESU 14. Uh, look, in the 30-minute uh, chart, what we've got is a strong move to A, peak A, and then peak B right there. Then suddenly what happens, B minus, because it pulls back, then what happens is it creates a sideways trading range, very narrow trading range, and I said in these ranges you can get an inside buy mode, a uh, Chapman wave buy mode. So what happens, it goes A, B, C, D, E, and an F, and then you get your strongest move to the downside. I'll notate this during the break. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, 877-927-6648. Love to hear from you. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now is the perfect time to get a full month-long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone silent. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating Investors. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Well, folks, we're back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour, and the Dow is down 8, and S&P is down 55 cents. A real struggle. You know, when the tide turns, rallies tend to fail very quickly. However, I still think there's a chance that we won't make that test of the 16,341 low question of the day. Great question is, are we going to make, uh, do you think that this H pattern, lowercase h pattern or arch formation, could in fact turn into an M pattern? And that would say that there's going to be a balance towards, well, what I said, folks, every day I give a really detailed report on what we're looking at. Front page is always the first one out is the um, Dow Industrial Average daily chart with all the Chapman Wave notations, the trend lines. I usually take them out. Look, for instance, I don't need this anymore. It's done. So I clean it up. Uh, I do need that. That's the Chapman Wave inside wedge. That's been our support, uh, support declining line, target line, I call it. Um, that's been in force for a little while. We had a left side, right side price break over there. That's that green horizontal line to the red horizontal line. You've made the, as one arch pattern with a larger arch pattern. So my, my thinking here was that we would hold at the 16,369 16 level. Not break the 16,341 low of the 20th of May, um, and today's the last day. Uh, days young, anything can happen. But that was my thinking, and that we would bounce, and later on we would come back down, make a little arch formation, could even continue for about a week or two. And, but at some point you're going to break 16,300 
to 200 major support and the 200 period exponential moving average i need to make this a little darker so that i can actually recognize it there it is uh right there okay okay which is at uh, 16,297, um, that, that's going to be very important and that it will be reached. And when it's reached, it's probably going to go right through it. But before that, we'll have a bit of a bounce. That, and I even said here, um, in my write up, that we will probably try for the 16,500s before there. We test the 16,500s rather than the 16,341 target level first. Well, today the high was what? 16,504. And now we're down to the 16,432 level. And we'd be actually being a little bit lower. But it's this candle here that's going to be very important by the end of the day. So I don't want to even project more than I have to. And uh, since, there we go, right there. I want to do that so you can actually see there. You are. Now you can see the candle. So this is a daily chart, and the question is, can it go? And my thinking is, it's such an important session today. This is where you are so overbought in the shorter-term um, volatility indices that there should be some kind of a decent bounce here. Um, and if it fails to do that, that's very negative. <clears throat> so I hope that answers the question. Now, uh, um, one of the things that I wanted to show here was... The inside, let me just go back to this, this is the E-mini, and you look at the very strong uh, leg that it had to the upside, let me just put an up arrow because it was really very powerful, and then it just goes only to a B and then it fails, but what happens is it pulls back to about just over 50%, maybe a two-thirds retracement, and now from the inside track at uh, 2.30 on the 6th at uh, 1912.75 in the E-mini contract, it goes peak A, same thing, peak A. Then it goes B, C, D, and then it goes to a peak E at the high, today's high of 1925.75. And then it comes down. What, what can happen at a peak D or an E, especially when, as you can see right here in the 30-minute chart, there's a negative divergence between the lower stochastic and the higher price. You can pull back until everything comes back in sync on a very short-term basis. We are kind of back in sync here, so we're going to see where it closes um, today at 4 o'clock. Uh, so I think I answered those questions. The next question was... Um, if you have time, CTL, this is a century, CTL, a century link. Oh, boy. Uh, I don't like the candle that was formed uh, last month. I don't know what it was. It was obviously news-related. There's a news-related. One day the CTL is trading ho oh, hum doo -doo 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 -doo, um, at 37.54, and the very next day it's at 45.67. 45.67. So a spike like that that gives almost everything back and almost fills the gap, that's amazing. The gap high was 37.90. Today's low is 38.25. So, yes, it's still away from the gap, but it actually went into the gap. Who would have thought that? I... I get very nervous, but I do want to show you a technique. If you're long, I don't know if you're long, you're looking to short what it is. If you've held long because it had done so well and you just didn't bother to get out on this pullback, I'm going to make two suggestions. And the first one is make a trading stop on half your position. It didn't pull back for nothing. So make a trading stop. It's a 39.63 CTL. And I would make a stop at 38.98. Uh, on some part of my position, let the rest just ride. But if 38 gets taken out, I probably would say to you, you know what, this is really not looking very good. And if it takes out the low of today, which is 38.25, there's a real good chance it's going to fill the gap and even go lower. So you'll have a, plenty of opportunity to buy it back at lower prices if it's very weak in the next two days. So I hope that helps. Uh, all phone companies popped that day. Oh, oh, that was the phone company thing. It was, uh, I remember that. Uh, yeah, and Verizon did the same and went to a peak. This is very unusual. Verizon 
VZ trading at uh, 48.71, down 42 cents. Spiked very sharply, having tested the left side low bar yesterday. Not not a great sign because that's the 200 period moving average. Um, and Verizon down 43 cents at 48.69. Is saying, you know what? I could be down for a little while, and I'm a yield stock. So just be really careful because if Verizon takes out 47. Uh, on a daily basis, that's going to project to the 46, 45 level. But the weekly says, oh, oh, this is way more serious than that. And, and concur concurring with negative action in the monthly chart, that says, be careful, you could come all the way back to test the 45s, the most recent area of lows. So um, that's that. Then I had another question. I'm trying to think of what it was. Um, on the VIX. So here I am going back to the VIX because we've spent so much time over the last many years because the VIX is a kind of specialty in the Chapman Wave methodology. The way it trades, the way it retraces, uh, bounces, went to 1757 uh, five days ago. What was 1757? Why? It was within uh, seven points, uh, eight points of the most recent April high of 17.85 at peak B, which went to peak B minus. So at a peak D, which is where we're at, this is where you would expect, regardless of what the market's doing right now, theoretically, you would expect at this point that the VIX would start to pull back. But with the Dow having popped and now down 30 and the S&P down 3.5, look how the VIX is holding. It's at 50 at 16.06. 15.36 is the nine-period exponential moving average. So now let me go back to the story. And this person has said since 19, I think it was 90, every time the VIX had gone to the, the 21s or so, um, within, within a real short time, you had a, a, a very strong rally in the market. It really, it should have been much Higher because those are the biggest. But generally, over the last couple of months, the VIX, and not my last couple of months, the last year, the VIX has stalled in the 21s. If tomorrow, Friday at 5 o'clock, at uh, 4 o'clock, if the volatility index is over 17.24, watch out next week because that says next week the volatility index could spike much higher. That would be very negative for the Dow. But most of the spikes towards the 21 level. Besides the fact that they occur almost in one big swoop and then fail the same bar that makes uh, that high, the last three times that the uh, volatility index has been to the 21s area, um, there has really been an instant uh, repellent and you've had a buy signal come in into the stock market. I think this is different. <laughs> you've heard that before, right? Well, the fact is, how could anybody not say that this isn't different? This is the first time you've got the uh, the Fed in in decades and decades saying we want higher prices for the market. We want to keep everything down. So if the Fed isn't able to negotiate and and keep the volatility index from having a spike and then a drop into the 13s and then the 12s, but instead tomorrow is a is a, a lousy day. Or whatever it is, it's not a bad day in the weekly chart. It kind of closes in the high 15s. But if you're a bear, you really would like to see it close almost at the high of the week. And that would say, be careful, because Monday, we could start, uh, over the weekend, we could start a really sharp uh, sell-off. And that's the reason why, in a way, I, ca I kind of wish that we still had the gold position, uh, or at least the, the, the gold stock that we had. Um, well, that's the way it is. I, I just decided... I wanted to make losses. Oh, they're, they're starting to move. I wanted to make losses as, as, as tight as possible. It was two cents or three cents or something like that, two cents. So, um, so he has a question. Are you able to flip the chart for the VIX? Oh, good question. Let's go to the weekly chart. Let's go right here. Oh, man, that is a great question. I'll do it live right now. So here we are. I'm grabbing this, and I'm going to go. Save, snag it, and then I grab it over there and I say, actually, I'm going to grab it over here and I'm not going to show you what it is or anything about it other than I've taken it and I've resized it, I'm rotating it, flip, uh, there it is. I'm going to say, okay, flip, good, good, flipped, 
No, 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 flip and stay. And now I'm going to make it smaller. Oh, this is when you see this, folks. No, let me do it. I'll do it live right here, right there. Okay? So what I'm doing now is I'm making it smaller, resize. Let me see if I'm just going to go for one second. Let me go to see it live in my, on my computer, one of my many computers. There it is. Great. So this is what we want to look at. Hey, great question here in the den. Uh, look at this. Oh, oh, I didn't flip it over. Well, I'll do it right now. It was, I did rotate it. Rotate, nope. Image, rotate, flip. Can I flip this one or is it too late? Too late. Okay. Yep, no, there it is. Flip. Uh, vertical. No, that's it. Okay. Oh, I meant not to keep the uh, stochastic and the MACD. Anyway, you see this? You see the, the arch formation? The arch formation, it's almost like a cycle between that low on the left and that uh, low on the right. And then this one is a little a little longer, made up of two units. This is also made up of two units. And then this one here is also kind of made up of two units, and it's almost the same time frame. So this is a, a very much like the XIV, but I wanted to show it as the, the real thing, the, the, the VIX. Now let me move this away, and I'm going to show you something here. The reason why I didn't want to is that chart patterns don't necessarily, the root and the um, derivative don't always have to work in sync. And if you're looking at this, you will see that this, the XIV, which we are still short, um, it went to 47.66 at the peak F and it hit this trend line. It's probably about to take it out right now. It's at 36.39, real close to doing that. Very interesting. And that's one of the reasons why I didn't want to show the two charts at the same time because the, um, the VIX index itself, monthly chart, let me just drag it back here. Look, this is very different, very different. Look at that. Look, it just keeps making the arch formation. And you've got a, a, a far different pattern. Now, let me just do this. Make it bigger. See, there's a different pattern. So uh, sometimes they work exactly, and sometimes they don't. So the VIX is right now, uh, it must be close to the high of the day. Now, interestingly enough, the stock that we went long, kind of as a proxy for the market at this particular point, at this point, it's holding well. It's up 1.4%, 1.41%, and the Dow is down 0.28, the S&P is down 0.29, and the Qs are down 0.04. Oh, no, they're up 0.04. And that's this bifurcated market that I've spoken about for so long. It is very difficult uh, just to make a blanket statement. The only blanket statement I can make right now is that I've got sell signals to sell modes in the down the S&P weekly chart, even though the week is not finished. Um, the New York Stock Exchange, the IWM, but not the QQQ series because the weekly chart of the QQQ Trust. Look at this. Not bad. I, I'm absolutely sure that we're going to get some kind of a peak in the weekly chart that is very important. But I haven't yet. I can't even say it's a sell signal because the MACD is still strong. Stochastic's at 89%. And the price, although it's probably peak E, the price hasn't closed decisively below the nine-period exponential moving average, which is at, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to do that, uh, right there, which is at 90, let me see, what is this? 93.97, and it's at 94.55, a dollar and a half below, and all of a sudden I get a sell signal in the uh, weekly chart of the Qs, which have been, the, that's been the strongest in index. Dow's down 47, S&P's down five and a half, I'll be right back. take a hands-on approach to managing your investments and whether you're bullish or bearish on u.s treasuries the etfs from direction shares are there to help you magnify your perspective bull etfs for a rising market and bear etfs for a falling market direction shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade discover how we can help at directionshares.com today an investor should consider the investment objectives risks charges and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing the prospectus and summary perspective 
prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFNN.com. Eastern legend tells of a fair maiden who was offered a rare gift by the king of the land, a bag of pearls. The king promised that she could keep the largest, most perfect pearl she could find with these three conditions. One, choose only one pearl. Two, remove one pearl at a time, accept or reject it. And three, if rejected, it would be lost forever. She began by looking at the pearls passing on many special treasures. She delved deeper into the bag and soon the pearls replaced with pebbles. Sadly, she went home empty-handed. Folks, replace pearls with time because we cannot go back even two seconds. We live in the eternal moment of now. So when now are you going to take advantage of my offer to you, a subscription to my daily investment newsletter service, Mastering Probability, where you can experience the most incredible pearls for trading and investing, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator and Strategy. The offer? It gets better. A 30-day money-back guarantee. Don't go home empty-handed. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, we're back. Basil Chapman, Tech Divisions Hour. A couple of questions. The Dow's down 54, S&P's down 6.5. Most importantly, look, there it is. There's that E-mini. There's that peak E in the Chapman wave right there, the 200 period expansion moving average resistance. Oh, man, I love this. If I get a chance to do a Daryl's show tomorrow, um, I think it's going to work out. Uh, we will look at this in greater detail and look at these different parameters that you can use. Now, let's go to our caller. We've got Brent in Martinez, California. Brent. Brent, how are you? I'm doing just great today, Basil. Much better than yesterday. I was, I was pretty wiped out yesterday. I had a very late night picking my wife up from the airport, but I, I feel better today. So. Oh, very good. Very good. And you <laughs> wanted to look at? I had originally called to ask you about the IVB, but to be honest with you, since the time's running out, I just wanted to compliment you on your, I think, exceptional detail on your charts. I think most everybody, at least myself, I'm a visual person, so to look at your charts is, I don't know, to me is very helpful, and it, I think you just put a, a lot of great detail in there that makes them 
I don't know. It's, there's not much to, left to, to think about other than just looking at the chart. And I think you laid it out pretty nicely for us. I, I really appreciate you saying that. You know, I've spent many years, decades, in fact, trying to whittle away, try to get rid of the, the noise. Uh, I try to keep it as simple as possible. And it is striking to me. It is just absolutely amazing how many times the simple lettering of a D and an E gives you some kind of a top of consequences. Cause the consequence, and I, 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 I'm like you. I sit there and I say, wow. How did that happen? But that's the technique, and I, I, I try to stick to it as long as I can. And uh, one of the reasons why I've made a really big deal about my weekly and then my monthly charts, the month of August, July into August, being so important is it's the same thing with the letters. Look, we're looking at the IBB. Well, it's made a peak F slash B in the monthly chart. Everything about it is saying that there is a stronger chance that the iShares, the Nasdaq Biotechnology ETF, is making it a peak of consequence here, and it'll be a confirmation if instead of being at 249, it starts to trade underneath 239 sometime time in August because that would certainly say at best it's a rectangle formation with a test of the two, uh, 210 to 220 area and at worst you're looking at a monthly top of consequence and that's the same as the peak E that was made in February of 2014 at 275.40 so far we've not gone above that and that downtrend the two I love to use just like those two trend lines that I call the inside track that's been the repellent so far and it's hugging the 9 EMA at 249. We're going to see tomorrow how it closes. But I, I try my very best to use. After, there's a lot of talking involved, but actually visually, it's like seeing a peak or a trough to actually explain what a peak is, that you've got to be going up and then turn down when you can't have a higher high than the previous. No, it's not a higher high because it could be an intraday high. It has to be a high bar, the whole bar. The words are amazing, whereas if you're just looking, it's like looking at a mountain. You see a peak, you know what a peak is. You're looking at a valley, you know what a valley is. But to actually put it in words... It takes time, and that's the, that's the part that, in a sense, frustrates me and in another sense says, hey, learn to articulate as clearly as you can, whenever you can, and try your best to make it as if someone listening for the very first time, I'll, I'll show a chart right now. Uh, this is going to be a slide 23, I believe. We'll just move along here like that. Yeah, we'll just go right here. And the same thing, the technique of... of I'm showing right now the charts. This is a blank chart. You just merely letter each successively higher peak, and you get to a peak D. That's where you've got to be careful, but you can't even go to an E and an F. And those are the techniques that I try to teach. But basically, I'm looking at the lettering, and on the way down, it works almost the same way, but with some variation. Hey, thank you very much for giving me a chance to articulate that, Brent. Have a wonderful, uh, wonderful day, and I'm pleased that you're more relaxed today. All right, take care, Basil. Folks, thank stay you tuned for Larry Pizzabente. There should be a great, great show coming up. Remember, the tide has turned. We're in a bear phase. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This is TFNN.